that in those moments of when you're facing adversity and when you're challenged, um, you should always look inside because that's where the answer lies. I did not understand that fully. I heard that before, but I think when I went through this journey, I understood really what that what that means. And now I know where I can always find strength um, and belief and motivation to to get me going. Thank you very much for this wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Loris. I appreciate it. Again, as he said, the answers are within. He didn't know that in the beginning or he learned that over time. It always is a practice. We get lost in the seeking the answers outside and it doesn't take away from the practical things of getting a coach, getting a guide or whatnot. It's the and, and. It's not an either or. It's and this, and this, and this. And I, now I remember what I was going to say for people who don't have access to coaches and spiritual guides and therapists and all that kind of stuff, that sucks, no doubt. And Certainly, he has the luxury of that, and many people do. If that's not your situation, there are still many places and sources of information out there that can help you, whether or not it's to the privileged nature of, of a Djokovic or someone else. There are many things out there that can help you. Mm. Start with where you're at. What is in front of you? A book, a library, YouTube has a ton of stuff. The internet has a ton of stuff. So you got to start somewhere, and you can't use that as an excuse to not pursue help and change. Yeah, I think that's a really, really important point that we we all we do have access. There are there is stuff around us that we just need to sometimes recognize it. Um, the other thing I think is worth worth mentioning about Djokovic is he is, he is so far from perfect. <laughs> so he has had if you watch and if you sort of are interested in him mm. and you start to go through YouTube clips of his play, there's so many cases where he's smashed rackets in the middle of a match, has had huge meltdowns. Um, he's had a very complicated complex relationship with tennis fans his rivals uh roger federer and rafa nadal have always been more popular and he's always struggled with that and he has always i think and he would probably admit this he hasn't always managed that as well so he's by far not a, a perfect human being and i think that's so we started this by saying should we compare ourselves to like this like the superhuman nature of djokovic He's probably so human in so many ways. He's he is he doesn't always live up to his, his aspirations and his deals. He's always battling himself. Um, in the post game interview, post match interview he gave last night after his big victory in the French Open, he said to his team, he said, "I'm so sorry put, for torturing you over the last two weeks. I know I'm like a lot a lot to deal with. I'm very difficult to deal with, especially under stressful conditions of a big." Uh, major tournament so he he asks a lot of the people around him he he's probably difficult he's probably not always nice he's probably not always compassionate um he's not always probably um understanding of other people's concerns mm -hmm. and he's you know he's very hard driving both of himself and other people around him um so just, I think that it's just important maybe to cap that the, our, this discussion off with with some of that, saying like he's not someone to be like, oh, you know, wow, he's perfect. He's not. He's just a human like the rest of us battling ourselves, battering, battle, battling our external environment and just trying to figure out a way forward and trying to achieve some of our objectives. Um, so I think his moments of honesty are really beautiful. Like even those moments of where he's saying like these are all the things I've done, but also reflecting on his – his human nature, his his the fact that he's not easy, and that he struggles with many things as well. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. Sorry, the, it'll Beautiful. be interesting to see yeah. how he deals with his post tennis life. Tennis gives him purpose, structure. What do you do when that is now when he retires and he no longer has training to structure his day or that next tournament? Then how strong are you? Right. So when you're when your sort of main hobby or main thing has been taken away from you, how do you sort of how, how do you have a source of mental strength that isn't dependent on one thing? Right. Mm -hmm. Or how do you have mental strength that's not dependent on one source is what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, so for Novak, for Djokovic, um, tennis is it. When he retires, when he gets too old to compete at the level he wants, then what? And I think there's some lessons there we can learn about, OK, how how do we diversify our, you know, our, our sources of inspiration, our sources of insight. And so when one falls off due to aging, due to the dynamic nature of life, we don't, we don't fall apart. Right. Which yeah. goes back to, in essence, one of the roots of this whole talk or video or his, what he said is 
training mental stability mm. and awareness, s- turning inward for the answers. If we continually practice that and honor that and own that as inherently valuable, then ideally speaking, okay, whatever comes our way, we'll be in a position to deal with that to the best of our ability. And that's such an important reminder. And just to reiterate some of the things you just said, Dave, about the humility and the honesty that comes from these things, his ability to acknowledge his own shit and and talk about that and address that is wonderful. And as he said earlier, all parts of ourselves are welcome and need to be integrated to be our best selves. And that's super duper important. Going back to a little bit, tying up that visualization. Do we visualize the good, the bad, the what? Accepting ourselves for who we are as imperfect beings, the good and the bad, is part of developing this resilience and this courage and sort of fortitude so that we're not pushing things away. We can see them clearly. We can acknowledge them and say them out loud. And then they lose their grip on us. That's the beautiful thing. So, yeah, that was fun. That was great. Thanks thank for you. listening. I don't know if you have anything else to say. No, but, I've said too much. Thank, all right. thank you, Mike. Thank you. Like, subscribe, all those other things. Share this. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.